what have we got so far to summarize in that short paragraph then yes loads of migrants go to hotels yes they're fettered and checked they are then split up and set to strategically placed locations depending on their background meeting up with certain people maybe from former regimental units which they were in overseas who knows there's a lot of logistics going on at these hotels it's a sorting center so guess what jack all of a sudden these hotels are going to be empty for a short period of time why is that because they've all been farmed out strategically to houses yes houses all over the uk really embedded into our community some might say sleeper cells we all know what happened in world war ii when spies were put into countries for a long period of time got proper embedded into the community when they got the order they carried out what they needed to carry out this does look very similar not only are they in houses here in the uk but also x and some currently being used mod sites RAF Scampton is one of them, Bedford is loads. We're talking thousands here, thousands and thousands of migrants, not just a few. So that's what appears to be happening. The hotels were empty, dispersed into these houses, and guess what? More migrants are coming, fill the hotels up again, it goes through the process, they get divvied out into these houses all over the place. Usually at night time in white vans, you think I'm making this up, I'm not you can check around and you'll find loads of people saying this they was woken up in the middle of the night looked at the window there's a white van out where there is foreign looking men moving into a house three doors up which was on the market to let yes lots of this is being done at night time not all of it but a lot of it is now that sounds quite sinister if you ask me who moves into properties in the cover of darkness there's only one sort of person who operates in the cover of darkness military absolutely military will always use the cover of darkness when and where possible and this is no different so we've spoke about this before and this may shock you but we're going to show it anyone can go online and type this in just look weapons found in uk mosque look look at what's been found in some not all mosques already here in the uk these have been found. It's unbelievable what's going on in these so-called places of worship. Okay? All of these have been seized already in mosques. Yes, you've heard that one. Earlier this week, we covered the warning from the head of MI5 that the Israel-Hamas war meant there was a greater risk of Islamist terror attacks in the UK. And now our leading counter-terrorism official wants the government to stop radical Muslim clerics from entering the UK if they call for people to be beheaded if they commit blasphemy. I mean, I think that's probably fair enough, don't you? Robin Simcox cited the case of N.I. Tullah Abbasi, who is from Bangladesh. He was on a recent visit to the UK and he said that critics of the Prophet Muhammad should have their heads chopped off. He said that people behind the 9-11 attacks were brave lions. Now, actually, it was partly only because of our very own Charlie Peters, who we've currently dispatched to Tel Aviv, who exposed the fact that this guy was in the country. But not just that, but there were people in places like Leicester, for example, and Birmingham, and parts of London as well, who were queuing up to buy tickets to go and see this guy talk. And that arguably, I think, is the more concerning thing. It's one thing lunatics like that being allowed into the country but it's another thing having a ready-made group of people an audience of people who are desperate to hang on every word that they say with me now is Reem Ibrahim who's director of communications at the IA Reem thank you very very much look you know all for freedom of speech and everything but maybe not if it means beheading people for slating the Prophet Muhammad surely these people need to be uh, kept out of this country do you think I actually disagree, Patrick. Excuse me? I do wow. think that if we believe in the unequivocal uh, right to freedom of expression and we believe that individuals should be free to uh, to freely express themselves and say those things, I would like to see people like Abbasi who are saying these awful, awful things, I would like to ensure that it's at the surface. Because otherwise, if we get into the business of banning these individuals from coming to this country, if we start banning people like Abbasi from entering 
entering this country and being able to speak, that this this kind of conversation would. But be you know, the thing is, you're never you're never going to change these people's oh, wow. minds, really. This is the thing. It's not like a normal debate. This isn't like a student debate or something. This is like radical Islamist extremism, right? Where they believe that they're serving a higher power and that nothing anybody says. You can't engage in a debate and. You know, our old mate Abassi there is not going to change his mind, is he? So what's the point? Abassi himself won't change his mind, but as you said, there are thousands of people that are attending his talks. And ultimately, what's going to happen is if we were to ban these individuals from coming to this country at all, then he would still be doing those talks and these kind of conversations would still be occurring, but they would be occurring underground without any challenge. And I think that fundamentally, this is really where we talk about the right to freedom of expression, but also I want to ensure that I know exactly where those individuals are. And I think the Met Police would probably appreciate that as well. If there are these thousands of people that are attending his yeah. talks, listening to him say all things like anybody that criticizes the Prophet Muhammad should be beheaded. These are horrendous things to be said. Mm. But if we if they were to be said underground, they would go unchallenged, and that's my concern. Okay. It's not just the right of the person who speaks to be heard. It is the right of everyone in the audience to listen and to hear. Excuse me? Dude, what the hell? Oh hell no! Dark times, bruh, dark times. Now get the f out of here. You're not, you're